Park Chang lives an almost normal life with his wife with its ups and downs. One day he wakes up and decides to use her ointment cure to make his skin look better. But his wife, Mi Ho, is mad at him for doing so. After they get ready, they go to their jobs. Mi Ho is a nurse and her colleagues are jealous of her because she is married to a lawyer. Most of them believe that Chang makes good money, but Mi Ho proclaims that she is not married to him for the money. That day, Chang has a big case to handle, but he loses. A crowd gathers around him to blame him for the result of the case, and they give him the nickname Big Mouth because he talks too much, but he loses all of his cases. Chang sits just outside the court with his father-in-law, Gi Kuang, to discuss about the case. Mi Ho calls them, but both of them are afraid to get her call. Chang finally answers the call because he has no other choice and admits to his wife that he lost again, which means that he is not going to bring money back home. Mi Ho is mad at him and asks him to get a divorce. Chang tries to use his father-in-law's leverage, but Mi Ho seems to have made her decision. That night, Mi Ho has a couple of drinks while her father prepares Chang's bags. When he hands the clothes to his son-in-law, Chang asks him to try to help him with Mi Ho. Gi Kuang can't do much, but one day later, Chang comes to the house with a big pile of money, hoping to reconcile with Mi Ho. His wife wonders how he got this much money, but there is something she does not know. Chang meets with the city's mayor, Choi, who is the man who paid him the money. Choi wants him to take upon a case where three men are involved. These men were caught accidentally in a car accident, and a dead body was found in the trunk of their car. In reality, Chang is not going to act as a lawyer, but rather a front man. The three men will take care of the case by bribing the judges and performing other devious acts, while Chang will just pretend to be their lawyer. Chang is reluctant to take upon this case, but the mayor says that he wants to hire him to find the truth. The three men have a dash cam video hidden somewhere, which probably shows what really happened. Chang accepts the offer and visits the three men in prison. They are Dr. Han, Dugian, and Chai Bong. The three men believe that Chang is the perfect candidate because he is a loser. He is going to do whatever they tell him to do. Unexpectedly, they receive a phone call from the warden who informs them that somebody has given the police an anonymous tip about the dash cam video. In reality, though, Chang was the one to give that anonymous tip. As he walks outside the cell, Chang slips a recorder inside their cell to be able to listen to their conversation. Chang hears that another accomplice of theirs has the dash cam video and calls the mayor to inform him about it. Choi and Chang visit the studio where Miss Zhang is filming her cooking show. Zhang is Dr. Han's wife. The woman is attacked by a mysterious man that same day, but she is saved by her visitors. Chang asks her about the dash cam video but Zhang refuses she has such video in her possession. Then Chang plays the recording from the prison for her and tells her that she is going to be convicted as an accomplice to a crime. But if she gives him the video, Chang will not involve her name in the case. Zhang is convinced to give him the video, but apart from that, she also gives him the name of Gong Jihoon, the president of a big newspaper. When Chang goes home, he watches the video. The video depicts the three guilty men killing Professor Seo. In his dying breath, Seo tells them that their secret is going to be revealed. Chang begins doing better with his financial situation since he is paid by the mayor and decides to take his wife on an expensive dinner. But soon he receives a call and has to leave. A kind female employee offers him a free coffee, but the drink is spiked. Chang starts feeling dizzy when he drives and crashes the car. Despite the intensity of the accident, Chang wakes up soon after dreaming about how he met his wife. Meanwhile, a man searches his car and steals the dash cam video. But that is not his only problem. The police have a search warrant for his office, and they find some interesting things in it. They find a stash of drugs, a stash of money, and even some gold. Chang is arrested, and the media along with the police consider him to be a notorious criminal known as Big Mouse. The lawyer tries to ask Choi for help, but the mayor turns him down and tells him that he should have been more careful. Chang is taken to prison, and the three men decide to kill him as he is not useful to them anymore. As they are about to execute him, President Gong Ji-hoon calls the warden to order him to stop them. Big Mouse has stolen money from him, and he wants to get it back. If Big Mouse dies, he will not be able to find where the money is. The warden stops the execution, and Chang has to get used to his new life as a prisoner. When he is thrown into his cell, Chang watches Mi Ho speaking to some reporters. Before she finishes her speech, she turns into the camera to address Chang and tells him that she tried to visit him, but they did not allow her to see him. Later, a prosecutor interrogates Chang, 
trying to figure out if he is Big Mouse. The prosecutor even plugs him to a lie detector. But when he asks the big questions, the episode cuts to another scene without letting us know if Chang is Big Mouse or not. Later, Jahoon visits his friends in prison to tell them that they should not lay a finger on Big Mouse because he has to find his money first. The warden watches this conversation through his cameras while he eats popcorn. He finds this situation very interesting because some of these powerful men want Big Mouse dead while others don't. Later, the warden decides to have a talk with Chang to ask him if he really is Big Mouse. He is friendly toward him in the beginning, but he gets more hostile when Chang exclaims he is not Big Mouse. Chang is disappointed with how things developed and doesn't care if he lives or dies. He picks a fight with a prison boss named Chun Sik, but realizes that his will to live is stronger than his disappointment and beats him up. Then he corners a psycho serial killer and tries to get him to kill him. But the serial killer breaks down in tears when Chang mentions his mother. This incident causes the other inmates to believe he really is Big Mouse. A famous criminal like him would totally have the guts to fight against anyone. Later, Chang pretends he is going to escape in order to make the guards shoot him, but they just arrest him. The reason for that is because the warden is watching what's happening through his cameras and he orders his men to stand down. The next day, the prisoners are taken to work on cleaning the drains, but things get out of hand when the guards bring them food because they consider it disgusting. Chang has started identifying with the persona of Big Mouse, and he starts a mini-riot. The prisoners grab buckets of poop and they attack the guards with it. At some point, things escalate, and the warden has to intervene in order to stop them. Chang approaches him and speaks in his ear that he is going to kill him and the three powerful men if Warden Park continues to make his life miserable. Eventually, the warden takes a step back and allows the prisoners to get some better food. After a while, Chang is informed that his lawyer is here to see him. Miho has come along because she has received Chang's divorce papers and wants to stop him from taking any further action. Chang explains to her that he wants to keep her safe so getting a divorce will protect her. On the other hand, Miho can't let their past go and insists on being his wife. She supports him and she is going to stay with him no matter what. Later, Chong is taken to solitary confinement and that's where his identity truly merges with the one of Big Mouse. His voice oversights the psychologist Carl Jung, saying something along the lines that a man can become the persona he keeps replaying in his subconscious mind. When he is taken to the general population again, Chang is a changed man. Everybody worships him for what he does for the prisoners, and Chang is about to take it one step further. He asks his fellow inmate Jerry to inform everyone in the prison that he is going to grant the wishes of the prisoners. A few prisoners meet with him to ask him for what they want. One of them is the cell's room leader, who asks Chang to find his lost daughter. She has been gone for a long time, and nobody knows her whereabouts. He tried to find her himself, but things got complicated and he ended up in prison. Then, the psycho serial killer asks Chong to help his mother. She is sick and she is being hospitalized. In the meantime, Miho starts a new job as a nurse at the hospital where the mayor's wife is working. She is doing this in the hope of finding more information about Professor Seo. According to the dash cam video, Professor Seo might have left a paper behind that will burn some powerful people. She starts working as a caregiver for cancer patients and soon has to help one of them when their heart stops. Miho gives them CPR and saves the patient. But instead of praising her, Hyun scolds her. Miho is new and she doesn't know that the relatives of all of the patients on this floor have signed an order not to give CPR to their people in cases like this one. Miho finds this to be very weird and annoying, but she has to be careful and find out more intel. When she takes a break outside, she sees a man from the hospital trying to convince a woman to sign the same order for her relative, who is a patient in the hospital. Back inside the prison, the three powerful men call the warden for a talk and make it clear that they want to kill Chang. The warden can't allow them to do it, though, because he has different orders from Jahoon. On the other hand, he can't say no to the big pile of money that the three men are offering him. They are just asking the warden to look the other way once. Soon, the three VIPs gather some prisoners for this mission, and the guards lock them in an area with Chang and his followers. The two groups start fighting while the serial killer gets a knife out and starts walking toward Chang, even though he has been posing as his follower. The room leader sees him and jumps on his way, saving Chang from the attack. The warden has to intervene and stop the fight because if he does not, Jihoon will figure out he was a part of this. The next day, another incident takes place in the hospital when Miho administrates two milligrams of a drug to a patient. 
The head nurse scolds her because she should have given him one milligram. To resolve their conflict, they take a look at the patient's card on the computer to find out what his prescription is. The dosage is indeed one milligram, but Miho says that somebody has changed the number because it was two milligrams earlier. She has proof of it because she has taken a screenshot on her phone. Later, Hyun gathers the personnel in the conference and Miho decides to go on the offensive. She jumps up while Hyun is speaking and throws a bait by saying that she has read Professor Seo's paper. According to it, they are doing many things opposite to the correct medical policies. While Miho commutes back to her house, she has a creepy feeling like somebody is watching over her. Thankfully, she meets with her father and can return home safely. As they do, she receives a phone call from the mayor who asks her to meet in person. Inside the prison, a series of events take place that work in favor of Chong. One of his attackers dies inside his cell in solitary confinement. The guards believe that this guy ended himself because there is no way somebody else can get in there. However, there is a certain prisoner who can't stop screaming that Big Mouse killed this man. The doctor comes to see this screaming prisoner and concludes that he is totally nuts. When a bunch of prisoners are released to the general population in the cafeteria, all eyes are on them because things may get tense between them and Big Mouse. When these guys sit down to eat, one of them is poisoned and dies. All the prisoners watch, believing that Big Mouse is taking his opponents out one by one. At the same time, Chang considers the possibility of Big Mouse being inside the same prison and actually being the one who framed him. Soon, Jihoon visits the prison to have a talk with Chang and asks him to get his money back. Chang is not going to give it to him, but Jihoon wonders how he can be certain Chang is really Big Mouse. He exclaims that Big Mouse did business with some drug dealers and asks him to get the names of the top drug dealers he worked with. Chang doesn't know these names, so he replies that he likes to keep his clients safe and private. Jihoon is not convinced and gives him five days to tell him the names, or else he will assume he is not Big Mouse and he will kill him. When Jihoon leaves, Chang attacks a guard to get his hands on his phone and calls the mayor to ask him for the names. The mayor has gotten that list of names from the prosecutor, but he refuses to help Chang and hangs up on him. Inside the prison, the warden and some of his guards review the footage from the cafeteria and they realize that the man who died swallowed a cyanide pill. This means that he ended himself and was not killed by Big Mouse. The warden orders his men to search Chang's cell, but they find nothing suspicious in it. Warden Park tells Chang that he knows his secret. He likes to be worshipped, but he did not kill those men. Chang claims that he did not have to use his hands to kill those men, but how were they convinced to end themselves? Meanwhile, Miho is still being followed, so she texts her father for help. Mr. Gi and Soon Tai, a lawyer who's Chang's friend, intercept the man and put him in handcuffs. The man reveals that he is the mayor's secretary, so Choi visits Miho to clarify the situation. As he claims, he was worried about her because she mentioned CO's paper, so he had his secretary follow her in order to make sure she would be fine. He also hands her a list outlining Big Mouse's top five drug clients. Miho wastes no time, and she visits her husband to hand him the list. Inside the prison, a bunch of betting cards start being smuggled inside as the inmates go crazy with predictions of who will win the war between Big Mouse and the three VIPs. The guards try to put an end to this betting madness, but Big Mouse confronts the three VIPs directly and tells them that he has a way to prove he is Big Mouse, so they place a bet on it. At the same time, Choi meets with Jahoon in an art gallery, and the powerful media man reveals that the list he had given the prosecutor was fake. Chang will give him the fake names he provided them with, and that will prove to him that he is not really Big Mouse. Choi tries to call Chang to warn him, but to no avail as the phone is in the hands of the warden. Soon, the guards get Chang from his cell and take him toward the meeting room. The crowd cheers for Big Mouse as he walks through the prison while the mayor makes his way inside the penitentiary. Choi wants to have a talk with Chang, but the warden can't allow him to do it. He orders his guards to take Chang away, and the lawyer soon meets with the three VIPs. Jihoon is also waiting for him because he is going to be a part of this game. Choi can't miss the fun, so he joins them in the meeting room. The warden outlines the rules of the game. Jihoon is going to write the names of the top five drug clients of Big Mouse on a paper, and then he will fold it so nobody can see it. Then, Big Mouse will write the same names and they will compare the papers to see if the names match. 
Everybody's expecting Big Mouse to lose, but they are surprised to see that the names match perfectly when they unfold his paper. Some inmates are very happy when the results get out as they have won their bets. Back inside the meeting room, Choi thinks to himself that Chang is really Big Mouse and has been playing him. On the other hand, Jihoon proclaims that he can't believe Chang is Big Mouse. He informs everyone that a man named Peter Hong has been arrested, and he will be able to tell them if this is really Big Mouse. Peter Hong is the fund manager to whom Big Mouse gave his money so he can launder it by making investments. Indeed, Chang is taken to the interrogation room so Hong can see him, and the prosecutor asks him if this is Big Mouse. However, Hong's alarm clock rings, and he has to get his insulin shot. He gets a shot before he can answer the question, but he ends up dying. Next, Jihoon has a private talk with Choi and asks him if he is Big Mouse. Choi feels a bit uncomfortable, but Jihoon exclaims that he is just joking. As their conversation reveals, there is some bad blood between the two. Apparently, there is a man nicknamed The Elder who runs the city and has made both of them who they are. Jihoon is jealous because The Elder favors Choi more than him. Later, Jihoon invites Miho to dinner because if she really is Big Mouse's wife, she is as dangerous as him. He talks to her about Professor Seo's paper and offers to buy it from her. All she has to do is to name a price for it. Miho is not going to negotiate with him, so she just leaves. When the earnings from the bets are distributed, Chang pays some money to the warden and asks him to stay off his back. The three VIPs are worried about the latest developments and they start imagining how Big Mouse is going to kill them. Soon, Jehoon visits the prison again to talk to the three powerful men, but then he also stumbles on Big Mouse. As they talk, Jehoon receives a phone call from his wife who tells him that somebody sent her some flowers that are supposed to be sent when there is a funeral. Apparently, this is a move Chang made to warn Jihoon to stay away from his wife. Later, Chang gets his hands on Dr. Han of the three VIPs. He states that he has seen the video, and he knows that Dr. Han was only driving when he and his friends killed Seo. This means that he is not going to be sentenced as a killer when the time comes for their trial. But since there is no video available for the authorities, Chang wants him to tell the truth in court. Dr. Han can't really do that, but Chang teaches him a hard lesson by almost killing him. When they wake Han up again, he is convinced that he should do as Chang is telling him. In the meantime, Miho decides to follow the head nurse around the hospital because she is making some suspicious moves. Miho ends up in a storage room, but she can't find the head nurse anywhere, as if she vanished. The guard and Miss Hyun enter the storage room and tell Miho to come out because they have seen her through the cameras. Miho comes out pretending that she is getting some medical supplies. Hyun asks her to leave and then reminds the guard that he should never enter the secret compartment inside the storage room. The man comments that the previous hospital director used to tell him the same thing. The next day, Choi meets with Miho to tell her that her husband has been tricking all of them and he really is Big Mouse. Miho can't believe that but Choi explains that the list he gave her was full of fake names of drug clients. However, Chang gave the real names when he faced Jihoon. That same day, the personnel from the hospital volunteer to do some dental work on the inmates, and Miho has a chance to meet with his wife one-on-one. -on -one. The first thing she wants to know is if her husband is really Big Mouse. As they talk, the warden is watching over them, but Chang already suspects this. She takes Miho out to the yard at an area where the warden is not going to be able to listen to them, and tells her the truth. One day before the face-off with Jihoon, somebody put a bag on his head from behind and put him to sleep. When his friend Jerry woke him up, Chang found a tarot card on him with five names written on it. He had no idea if this was a trick or not, so he didn't know if he should use the names Choi gave him or the names on the tarot cards. But when it was time for him to meet with the three VIPs, Choi came to visit him and he looked worried. That's what made him understand that something is off and he used the names from the tarot card. Since that day, the real Big Mouse uses tarot cards to communicate with him. Chang deciphers the meaning of the cards and acts accordingly. When a card is placed in its normal direction, he knows that the real Big Mouse is going to do something. When the card is placed upside down, he knows that he has to do something himself. At the same time, Han has some private time with his wife and wants to have intercourse with her but Zhang doesn't want to because there are cameras in the room and somebody might be watching them. Han gets mad and he beats her up. When the hospital personnel leaves the prison, Miho sees the bruises around Zhang's neck and tells her that she can help her if she needs assistance in any way. 
That night, Miho gets a phone call as she returns home. The woman on the other end of the line is a woman seen in the hospital a few days earlier when a man was trying to convince her to sign the hospital's weird contract. The woman reveals that Seo's paper exists and it is hidden in a piece of jewelry. Seo approached her before he died because the woman used to make jewelry and asked her to conceal something inside a piece of jewelry that looks like a cross. As the woman speaks, an assassin appears behind her and pushes her to her death. Miho confronts Hyun about the cross because she has seen it around her neck, but the director does not hesitate to give her the cross so Miho can examine it. Miho tries hard and pulls the cross from every angle, but there is nothing hidden inside of it. When she returns home, she watches a video of a forum where Hyun and Zhang are talking. She and the rest of the group realize that Zhang is wearing a necklace with a cross symbol inside of it, so this could be the piece of jewelry they are looking for. A flashback is triggered and we are shown that Yang met Professor Seo on a night when she was running from home because Han abused her. Seo took care of her and the two of them gradually fell in love. At some point, Seo gave her the necklace as a gift. Back in the present, the three VIPs are about to be taken to the court where Han is supposed to tell the truth, but the warden has taken precautions and Chun Six gang keeps Han back so he won't ruin things for the other two. Cheng starts laughing because this has been his plan all along. He knows that Han would not tell the truth if he left this prison anyway. Chung's followers pretend they are fighting with Chun Six boys. During the fight, they break the statue of the Holy Mary inside the church. Chang's real plan is to catch Big Mouse. He will replace the statue with a new one, but the new one will have a camera installed to it. This way, he will be able to see who visits the church to give him the tarot cards. In the meantime, yet another cancer patient dies in the hospital. Miho wants to learn more information, so she visits the patient's relatives to pay her respects. While she is around them, she overhears that the contract the relatives signed stated that the dead patient has to be cremated, not buried. This makes Miho suspicious because it sounds like a precautionary measure. If a body is buried, then somebody may run tests on it later. Miho takes action and visits the hospital's morgue that night to draw some blood from a dead body. As she walks out of the morgue, Yun waits for her and orders the guards to search her. However, Miho has played it smart and has nothing on her. She returns to the morgue when she is left alone and retrieves the bottles with the blood. When she enters the elevator, an assassin jumps inside it through the hatch on the top and tries to kill her. Thankfully, Choi happens to be near, and the assassin is forced to run away when the elevator doors open. Inside the prison, Chang checks on the camera a few days later and realizes that Jerry has been coming in and out of the church. However, he also notices that the video skips 30 minutes, which means that somebody has edited most probably the real Big Mouse. This means that Jerry is not Big Mouse, but rather he just came into the church accidentally. Soon, Jerry is approached by Jehoon, who promises to buy his freedom if he gives Chong to drink some poison tea. Jerry does so, but he regrets his move and informs Miho that her husband is suffering a food poisoning. Miho and her father intervene just in time and save Chong. Then they thank Jerry for his help and offer him some money as a form of gratitude. As Chong is asleep in the hospital, a guard pins his thumb and uses the blood to sign a paper. Then he meets Jihoon in the parking lot and gives him the signed paper. Miho spends some time with her husband when she wakes up, but the guards do not allow her to stay long. Soon Chong is taken outside and he hugs his wife before the officers take him away. En route, Chong realizes that the guards are not taking him back to prison, so he tries to fight them and escape. The guards give him a shot that puts him to sleep and Chang is taken to a mental asylum. Chang dreams of being back in the prison's church while Big Mouse approaches the confession booth. Chang grabs him from behind, but Big Mouse is wearing a mask. The two of them fight, and Chang manages to remove his mask, but all he sees is his own face. When he wakes up, Chang realizes he is in a white room. He is tied and contained, unable to make any moves. The nurses mess with him because they have clear instructions not to allow him to sleep. The prosecutor explains to Jehoon that they are doing this to increase the effectiveness of the truth serum they are going to inject Chang with. When they do so, Chang starts seeing some visions. He sees a mouse hopping on his leg, but then the room is filled with mice and he is terrified. Jihoon asks Chang if he is Big Mouse while he is still under the influence of the truth serum. Chang replies he is not, and Jihoon then asks him where he has hidden the money he stole from him. 
Chang replies that he has not stolen his money, but then falls asleep for a couple of seconds, dreaming about an excursion he had with his wife on a mountain near their city. When he wakes up again, Ji Hoon is about to inject him with a second dose of the true serum. The prosecutor warns him that a second dose might cause a cardiac arrest, but Ji Hoon doesn't really care. This man is not telling him where his money is. Chang wants to stay alive, so he gives them the name of the mountain he had visited with his wife. This way, he buys himself some time. Ji Hoon and his associates go to the mountain, and they dig at the spot where the money is supposed to be. Even though they find a wooden box, there is only one bar of gold inside of it. Ji Hoon returns to the asylum and demands to get the rest of his money. When Chang hears that Ji Hoon found some gold, he realizes that Big Mouse is watching over him even in this place. Soon, somebody causes a fire inside the asylum, and Chang is able to break free. However, a big, strong male nurse stands in his way, and they start fighting. One of the firefighters that storm into the asylum helps Chang, and he is proven to be Jerry. Jerry takes his former cellmate away from the asylum and gives him the keys to a car that he can use. Chang wants to know what's happening, and Jerry reveals that Big Mouse paid him to save him. Chang wonders if Jerry met Big Mouse, but the young man has no time and drives away. Unfortunately, Jerry is intercepted by the police, and he is injured as he tries to escape. The police are looking everywhere for Chang, and the prisoner stumbles on a roadblock later that night. The policeman who is checking his car pulls his phone out and compares the face he is seeing to the one of the fugitive on his phone. The officer allows him to leave while the camera shows us that he has a tattoo behind his ear. The next morning, Mi Ho and the rest of the group decide to take action. They leak some information to a show that has 800,000 subscribers on the web to talk about the case of Professor Seo. They also go on a protest outside the courthouse, claiming that Chang did not escape custody, but rather was abducted. When she sees the prosecutor, Miho tells him that he needs to do his job, and the latter asks her to hand him her phone so he can make sure that she is not helping him hide. Chang calls Soon Tar and asks to speak with his wife in order to calm her down. He says that he is going to expose everyone, including Big Mouse. One day later, the three powerful men are taken to the court while Chang appears on the web show on livestream. As the trial starts, Chang makes a prediction and says that the three men are going to be set free. He explains that the trial is staged, but it has to look convincing. To achieve this, the prosecutor will present three arguments against the three men, one of them being that their DNA was found on the dead body in their trunk. However, the three men will turn this around by pretending that they were trying to save Professor Seo by giving him CPR. So that's how their DNA was found on the dead body. A flashback shows us that the three murderers came up with this trick when their car crashed because they knew their DNA would be found on the dead body. The word circulates over the internet that Big Mouse is live and he is making perfect predictions about the trial. Jihoon is informed about this by his secretary and he signals the prosecutor to ask the judge for a break. While the bad guys are trying to regroup, Jihoon receives a phone call from Ms. Jung who tells him that she has Seo's paper. She is going to give him the paper if he can offer her something in exchange. She wants her husband to sign the divorce papers she is going to send him over email. Jihoon acts fast and forces Han to sign the papers before taking them to Zhang. At the meeting point, Zhang gets the divorce papers while she gives Jihoon a USB with Seo's paper. However, Jihoon gets mad because this is just a boring paper that has nothing to do with the one he is looking for. He tells Zhang that she can't trick him. The three men who killed Seo are clever men, and they killed him for something that mattered to them, not this. But then, Ji Hoon understands that he has been on camera this whole time. He grabs the camera and destroys it. Ji Hoon wants to keep Jang right there with him, but the mayor intervenes and helps her leave. In the meantime, Chang appears right outside the courthouse and promises that he is going to reveal the truth to the public. But for now, he is arrested and has to return to prison. At the same time, Jerry wakes up in the hospital while a doctor with a tattoo on his wrist gives him a piece of paper with a message. Chang returns to prison while we are now shown that the mayor has a secret location full of gold bars and sensitive information. The next morning, the elder requests to have a meeting with the three ex-prisoners to scold them. At that point, Chang also enters his office to give him Professor Seo's paper, which he had gotten from Ms. Zhang without anyone knowing. He tells the elder that now there is nothing in the world that can pose a threat to him. When they all go outside, the three men confront Choi for making them look like fools, but the mayor is one step ahead. 
The men tell him that the dash cam video shows them speaking to him, revealing that they called Choi the night when they killed Seo. Back then, Choi told them to go meet him, and he would take care of the body. However, the mayor had his people cause an accident to expose the three men with the body. Choi tells them that his men found the dash cam video and gave it to him. In return, he destroyed it once and for all. Even if the three men try to frame him as an accomplice, nobody's going to believe them. In any case, Choi tells them that they should help him stay out of trouble because that's the only way he can help them in return. Inside the prison, Cheng leaves a message for Big Mouse saying that he wants to meet him or else he will stop helping him. Big Mouse agrees and he shows up to meet Chang, who is surprised to see the warden. Warden Park claims that he is Big Mouse, but Chang has a hard time believing him. The warden says that he killed the men who attacked him a few weeks back. He was the only one who could have done it because he has access to everything inside this prison. Chang reveals that he has been recording this conversation and he has the warden's confession on tape. But on the other hand, he doesn't believe that the warden is Big Mouse. Instead, he believes that the warden is just a pawn Big Mouse is using. As the days go by, some of the prisoners start developing some weird symptoms, and they have cravings to eat some vitamins that Gunshin Hospital is administrating to them. Soon, Miho is fired from Gunshin Hospital, and she comes to the prison to ask for a job, hoping to find more information on the dark secrets lying behind Gunshin Hospital. That day, Miho saves the life of one of the prisoners, and the warden gives her the job position. When this prisoner is taken to the hospital, the doctors run some tests on him, but they do not find anything out of the ordinary in his blood work. Miho is still suspicious and gets some blood from this prisoner. Later, she gives the blood to somebody else whose face we do not see. In the meantime, Chang gives the recorder to the mayor and the prosecutor, which leads to the warden being arrested. That night, Dr. Hyun drinks a spiked coffee, and she is involved in an accident. When Chang has some time alone with Miho, he proclaims that he suspects the mayor's big mouse. Miho noticed in the latest blood work results she got from the hospital's morgue that the blood type was changed. Chang recalls that the mayor came in contact with her when she was attacked in the elevator. Maybe he knew that she had sneaked the blood bottles outside the morgue and swapped them. The next morning, Gan Su Chul, the former head guard and current new warden, gathers the inmates to make some announcements. After telling them that he is going to be the new warden, he announces that he is going to install some red boxes around the prison, which the inmates can use to write their complaints anonymously. Then he exclaims that he is going to search everyone in order to see if they have any weapons on them. Gan takes them inside a tent one by one to search them, but his true motive for doing this is a bit different. A flashback reveals that the new warden has agreed to help Kang find Big Mouse. The way to do it is by searching if any inmate has a tattoo that resembles a design from the tarot cards. Soon they find such a tattoo on a prisoner, and Chang discusses the fact with the warden. One day later, the former warden returns to the prison, but this time he is going to be an inmate instead of an officer. He dares to slap Gan, but the new warden shows him who is in charge now. Soon Gan gathers the prisoners again and presents them with Park and some other inmates who were found with the tattoo of the tarot design. He declares that Big Mouse has built an entire organization which is supporting him. The men he is presenting them with are part of this organization. The warden prompts the inmates to bring him Big Mouse and promises that he will favor anyone who finds Big Mouse. In addition, the warden clarifies that Chang is not Big Mouse and he has been playing them this whole time. The prisoners start beating Park in order to convince him to give them the real name of Big Mouse, but Chang jumps on their way to stop them. Later, Chang bursts into Gan's office and the two of them have a disagreement. The warden makes it clear that he is the boss inside this prison and he is going to run it any way he sees fit. Chang calls the mayor hoping to put the warden in his place, but Choi says he is in a meeting and hangs up. In the meantime, Dr. Han finds his ex-wife Yang and proclaims that he can't live without her. Zhang tries to stay away from him, but their meeting ends up in a fight and she is killed. The mayor rushes to the place and takes care of the dead body. He also steals her phone and goes through her messages, realizing that she has been in touch with Miho. Miho is supposed to give her some blood from the inmates for examination. The mayor calls Gan and tells him something important. As soon as they hang up, the warden declares that he has to kill Chang and Miho tonight. At the prison yard, Chang tells Park that he wants to meet the real Big Mouse, and this is the last warning he is giving them. 
If Big Mouse fails to appear, Chang will stop assisting him or any other member of his organization. That night, Chang waits for Big Mouse to appear while somebody kills the lights inside the prison. When Big Mouse appears in the dark, Chang lights a lighter to see his face and realizes that Big Mouse is the room leader. The first thing Chang wants to know is why Big Mouse chose him instead of somebody else. Big Mouse explains that he believed Chang needed to be saved. Then he says that Ji Hoon and the elders' organization are responsible for his daughter's death and he is not going to rest until he punishes all of them. Chang exclaims that he doesn't want to be a part of this game anymore, but Big Mouse tells him that he is going to kill him if he backs out. Chang wants to suggest a new deal to Big Mouse, but the scene cuts to the warden's office, where he is preparing to kill Mi Ho. His most trusted guard attacks Mi Ho, but she is saved by the psycho killer inmate. Then, Gan Su Chul appears to finish the job himself, but Chang intervenes before he can pull the trigger. Soon, Park and Big Mouse make it into the room. The former warden has a grudge against Gan and kills him with his own gun. Now it is time for Chang to make his move. He calls Ji Hoon to tell him to come to the prison because he wants to scare Choi. Then he handcuffs Big Mouse and is about to hand him to the authorities. A flashback shows us what was Chang's secret deal with Big Mouse. In plain words, Chang will become his lawyer when he is released. He will defend him in court and will set bail for him. Big Mouse will pay the bail and he will be free. Back in the present, Chang turns Big Mouse in the authorities while the mayor and Ji Hoon watch. Chang approaches Ji Hoon to tell him that he can get his money back now. Soon Chang is released and becomes Big Mouse's lawyer. The reporters find this development very interesting, but Chang reassures them that he is going to do his job ethically. Elsewhere, Jehoon meets with the elder, who is about to reward him for finding Big Mouse. The elder is about to donate all of the shares he owns of Jehoon's company, making him the only person who can control the company. However, they are interrupted by Hyun, who turns the TV on because the elder has to see something. Chang is attending a press conference and claims that he is going after the people who are responsible for all the dirty stuff going on in their city. The elder is mad hearing this and takes his donation back because, apparently, Ji Hoon did not finish his job. Ji Hoon tries to convince him that he is going to take care of Chang, but the elder proclaims that they should not underestimate this man because he is the one who found Big Mouse. A few days later, Big Mouse makes bail, and he is free to live outside prison under some conditions, such as being tracked in real time by the police. Chang gives him a ride to his old restaurant, and Big Mouse starts narrating that he had a great time with his daughter in this place. Finally, he invites Chang to visit his restaurant tomorrow night so he can meet the highest-ranked members of his organization. But as soon as Chang leaves, the building explodes. After the police have concluded their research, Chang enters the building to take a look around, but he is attacked by an assassin. The assassin almost stabs him, but Jerry appears with one of his friends and they stop the killer. Right next, Jerry takes Chang to a meeting of the organization where they watch a video left behind by Big Mouse. He explains that since they are seeing this video, he is already dead. He explains that somebody has to succeed him, and he declares that Chang is going to be the new Big Mouse. Park does not like that decision, but there is nothing he can do. In any case, Chang tells him that he does not intend to be Big Mouse forever. He will only be Big Mouse until he finishes his job. Soon, Tai also walks into the meeting, revealing that he has been a part of the organization all along. Park keeps troubling Chang, so he ties him up, traps him in a car, and washes him in gasoline. Now, Park has only two choices. He can either accept the decision or leave the organization. At the same time, the mayor is attacked in the gym he uses to swim, but he manages to defend himself and stays alive. While all of this is taking place, Yun visits the secret lab inside Gunshin Hospital and witnesses the secrets that lie inside. The series does not reveal anything to us yet. Then she decides to destroy the secret lab and visits the elder to discuss her move with him. The elder is upset, but Hyun explains that she only destroyed the lab because it was not safe enough. She is going to build a new lab and only have trusted people working in it. Hyun takes it one step further and says that she is going to need some funds to make sure that everything will happen correctly. She asks to get the shares of Jihoon's company and the elder donates them to her. Of course, Jihoon is very upset about it, but there is nothing he can do. In the meantime, the mayor talks to the reporters about the attack that took place one day earlier and prompts them not to make assumptions about the attackers until the police have something credible for them. That night, Ji-hoon has a few drinks with his friends, 
but there is a surprise awaiting for him the next day. Chang gives him a call and asks him to meet. During their meeting, Chang tries to convince him to take him to see the elder. Chang makes it appealing to him by claiming that he is going to assist him in defeating Choi. He knows that the two of them are rivals. Soon Chang attends a press conference and he announces that he is going to run for mayor in the upcoming election. Later that day, Ji-hoon decides to have Chang as an ally and takes him to the elder. During this unexpected meeting, Chang claims that he is Big Mouse, but the elder knows that Big Mouse is dead. Chang declares that his organization is forcing him to become their next Big Mouse. If the two of them work together, however, maybe they can assist each other. The elder can't see how he could benefit by working with Chang, but the latter hands him a list with the names of the top 10 members of the Big Mouse organization. Chang wants the elder to support him in becoming the next mayor of the city because this is the only way he can defeat Big Mouse's organization. The elder will also benefit from this because he will have nobody standing in his way. The elder needs to think about it, but he still invites Chang to his birthday tomorrow night. When they walk outside, Choi tries to intimidate Chang by telling him that this is a war he can't win. In the meantime, Mi Ho and her father make an important discovery when they find an old man in a nursery home. As they find out later, this man has been the elder's old business partner. He wanted their company to be ethical, but the elder had already chosen a course for his business endeavors. In plain words, he only wanted to make money and did not care who would get hurt in the process. Since this man turned against him, the elder caused an accident to hurt him. But there is more. Mayor Choi is this man's grandson, and he decided to switch identities when he was still young. He did this in order to trick the elder so he would never understand this is his partner's relative. Choi intends to get revenge on the elder. The next day, Choi convinces Park to work with him so they can get rid of Chang. That night, Mi Ho attends the elder's birthday, but her husband is nowhere to be found. Park abducts him and kills him while he is on a video call with Choi. When Mi Ho learns about this, she tries to attack the mayor, but Choi just smiles. The mayor goes to see Park in the warehouse where Chang was killed but he can't see his body anywhere. Park tells him that he disposed of the body and Choi outlines how we'll take control of the city. In the meantime, Chang is alive and well. This was just a trick. Chang has everything on camera and he shows the video to the elder in order to convince him that Choi is going to hurt him in the future. The elder believes he just found a new ally in Chang's face and agrees to help him in whatever he may need. Having Chang as the mayor is better than having Choi on the other hand, Choi knows that he has to act fast. That night, he meets with the elder and kills him by injecting a drug into his bloodstream. Then he enters the elder's office to steal his will and gives it to one of his accomplices so he can change its contents. The next day, the elder's funeral takes place and everyone attends. Of course, spirits get heated pretty fast and they end up fighting. Elsewhere, Miho visits the psycho killer in prison and he reveals that the prisoners started feeling worse when they were taken to work on a tunnel. He believes that the water pipes there harmed them. Before they part ways, the psycho killer asks for a final favor. He wants Miho to find his siblings and ask them if his mother is getting better. Miho finds his siblings, but they refuse to talk to her. Unfortunately, she also realizes that she is sick because her nose and gums are bleeding. The next day, Jihoon also makes a move and meets with the attorney who is supposed to open and read the elder's will to everyone involved. Jihoon wants the attorney to rewrite the contents of the will, but the attorney refuses to do so. Jihoon tries to bribe him, but that bears no result as well. Soon, the will is about to be opened, and everybody is very impatient to hear what it reads. However, everyone is surprised when they hear that the elder has left half of the companies to Hyun and the other remaining companies to Choi. They all read the will with their own eyes and start fighting as they are left with nothing but the shares they already own in their companies. Choi takes his wife and the two of them walk away silently. That night, Choi pretends that he is going to reveal a big secret to his wife, but his secret is nothing but a lie. The current mayor flips the story and reveals that he is the grandson of the elder's old business partner. He pretends to be in doubt of the reason why the elder left half of his companies to him. He supposedly wonders if he is good enough to handle the responsibility or if the elder just gave him the companies because he is his old friend's grandson. Hyun is dedicated to supporting her husband and the race for the election starts right on the next day. Choi has many connections and he starts appearing on every channel to convince the people of the city to vote for him. 
Chong and his organization follow their own practices, while he has no idea that his wife is visiting a doctor. Miho has performed some blood work, and the doctor announces that she is suffering from cancer. He prompts her to make her preparations for the future. Miho knows that she has limited time, so she goes back to her husband, and she gets drunk. The two of them go for a walk near the lake and have a fun time together. The next day, Jehoon has to attend a meeting along with all of his friends. Everybody is silent because they are afraid of Choi and Hyun. Now that they have all the power in their hands, Jihoon tries to oppose them, but Hyun clarifies that if he does not cooperate with them, she will call a board meeting and they will remove him as the CEO of his company. Jihoon feels powerless, but he meets with Chang in order to offer him something that he might be able to use against Choi. He reveals that the elder has a son who is living in America. This guy is a psycho, and even his own father didn't want him to be here. However, if they find him and bring him into the country, maybe he can demand to get some of the contents of the will. In the meantime, Miho is informed that the psycho killer prisoner is in the hospital and he is about to die. She proceeds to visit him, and the man asks her about his mother. Miho tells him that his mother is doing better now, and the psycho killer can die in peace. Right next, his sister reveals to Miho that the psycho killer inmate is not really a psycho. He took the blame for a rich man who was a psycho killer for real. They needed the money to save their mother, and that's why they agreed to the man's proposition. Miho visits Hyun and gives her a summary of everything she knows. She exclaims that enough people have died already and prompts Hyun to stop whatever she's doing. That night, Miho spends some time with her husband. They grab a bite while she also helps him with his political campaign. However, Choi makes a bold move the next day. He finds the man who conducted a cryptocurrency scam a few months earlier. Chang was the attorney of the victims back then, and he lost the case. Choi pays the scammer to tell the media that Chang lost the case for his clients because the scammer paid him good money to do so. However, Miho is also doing a good job of uncovering more secrets that can burn Choi and Hyun. She finds a fish farm which uses the water coming to them by some large water pipes connected to a company named NK Chemicals, which used to belong to the elder. The man in charge of this fish farm reveals that NK Chemicals produces water waste while they develop and refine their drugs. This water is toxic and needs to be disposed of somehow. They came up with a solution and dispose of the water at this fishing farm. This water can be fatal if a human drinks it. The fish are also harmful, but the man claims that they do not sell the fish. They are just growing them so they can look like a legit company. While all of this is taking place, Choi and Chang attend a debate on TV, and the two of them try to trap one another into complicated arguments. Back at the fish farm, Mi Ho gets a recording of the man in charge confessing while the rest of the crew gets all of the evidence they can find. Back in the studio, the crypto scammer asks a question to Chang to make him look like a bad person. Miho knows she should hurry to assist her husband, and Jerry drives her to the studio. The bad guys try to stop them, but some members of the Big Mouse organization from the police help them move faster through the streets. When Miho arrives in the studio, she grabs the mic and reveals to the world that she has cancer. She got the illness by coming in contact with the water from NK Chemicals. She plays the video recording from the fish farm and exposes the truth, initiating a scandal. When they get a moment alone, Chang tries to be calm while speaking to his wife, but Mi Ho is more calm than him and helps him deal with the situation. Protests start taking place all around the city while the prosecutor calls Choi for an interrogation. In the meantime, Chang meets with Hyun to tell her that she is going down and prompts her to do the right thing. He is going to lose his wife because of her dirty work the same way that many people are losing their loved ones. Despite everything that has been going on, Choi still wins the election and remains the mayor of the city. Nobody can believe this, but Miho prompts everybody to stay positive. All of a sudden, they receive a package from Hyun, who has decided to do the right thing. She has sent them a burner phone that Choi used to use in the past for his secret communications. As the days go by, Miho keeps getting worse, but she can't miss the upcoming trial, where this burner phone might be the lead which will send Choi to prison. Unfortunately, though, Choi is one step ahead of them, and one of his accomplices claims that the phone belongs to him. Apart from that, they have altered their messages and phone calls, so there is nothing evil about this burner phone. Choi is released without facing any consequences. Miho dies a few days later, 
After paying his respects to his wife, Chang takes action and meets with Choi at the gym where he swims. Chang reveals that he has bought this gym and he is its owner now. Since the law failed to punish Choi, he is going to be the one to punish him. In fact, he already did. Choi wonders what Chang is trying to say, and Big Mouse reveals that he has filled this pool with toxic water from NK Chemicals. Choi is affected by the water, and he dies right in front of Chang. 